Hey everybody, I have a video here for you today. Now along with my Ancient America series, I also have a list that is approaching double figures of sites in Egypt you have probably never heard about. And I know we are all used to the videos from Giza and Saqqara and the places we, are, we have all heard about. Well, there are a lot of places you haven't heard about. Today we are going to go down to a place west of the Nile. And this place is about 4,700 years old. And I know a lot of videos that are made about Egyptian sites kind of say, hey, there was somebody here earlier, but this, I have no problem with this being built around 4,700 years ago, maybe during the third or fourth dynasty. And, you know, what actually happened is good enough with a lot of videos, but I think there is only one or two videos on YouTube about this site. But we are going to go down to an ancient riverbed here. But on historical imagery, you can kind of see what is down here. There is stone construction in the ancient riverbed. And what this is, is the oldest, largest dam in the world. Let's just go to a few websites and read a little. Now here's a black and white pic from a few decades ago, but the name of this place is called the Saad El Khafra Dam. And I'm not sure where that name comes from, if it actually comes from the Pharaoh Khafra, but the time frame fits. It says, in the 3rd or 4th dynasty, about 2700 or 2600 BC, the Egyptians undertook the construction of a dam on the ephemeral tributary of the Nile, the, the Wadi Gharari, some 10 kilometers southeast of Memphis. Now, the 4th dynasty, the Egyptians really became powerful, and it was one of their most mighty dynasties, the 4th dynasty. And they just theorized this is part of the development and improvement of the region around the capital of Memphis. And it says the remains of the dam are still visible today on both banks of the Wadi, and they were studied in 1982 by a German-Egyptian team. It says the dam comprises two rock faces with a central core of random material. The upstream and downstream faces are protected by cut blocks forming steps about 30 centimeters in height, and I think there's about 30 steps total that comprise the dam here. And here's a look at what remains today, but they theorize this is about maybe over 350 feet long and 50 feet high. So a lot of material went into this, and it really shows how they were trying to control parts of the riverway here. Now, there are some very ancient channels cut along the Nile, but here, this is a little ways inland. These are the limestone blocks on the upstream part of the wall, and it says these blocks have been eroded by wind. And here's an up-close look at the limestone blocks that are on the outer part of the dam here, on the upstream side. And here is a distant shot of the dam here, and they theorize that a catastrophic major flood took this thing out before it was even finished. There is really no sedimentation found anywhere on the dam, so that's why they think it was uh, destroyed before it was ever done. Here is part of the upstream wall, and they say these blocks weighed up to 300 kilograms, so a lot of effort went into building this thing, that is for sure. And here is a look, and here you notice a gentleman down here in the riverbed, but they say part of the upstream and downstream bed are visible on this shot. So that'll give you some idea of scale of how big this was. And it was supposed to come all the way across here, but big flood took it out. Here's a little diagram of what they think the dam looked like. Here, the edge of the wadi, 80 meters across, just the bottom of the riverbed, but the tops extended up here, but never finished, they say. Now, around the Fourth Dynasty, there was a lot of construction projects going on, and people just think this was just a part of them. And a lot of people say the Great Pyramids were built during the Fourth Dynasty, but to me, I think it is much more likely that they were just improving them and reconstructing some original structures that were already there and improving the monument that we call the Sphinx today. There is old kingdom blocks, repair blocks in the Sphinx. So if the Sphinx was carved in the old kingdom, why would you need repair blocks? in grooves that took a couple thousand years at least to erode. That doesn't make any sense, the story that we are being told about that monument, and I've gone over that many times. It says the abutments of what archaeologists regard as one of the oldest dams in the world still survive in the normally dry valley of the Wadi El Garawi, 40 kilometers south of Cairo. The dam was built around 46, 4700 years ago, they estimate, where the valley narrows to about 100 meters wide. The floor was covered with gravel and boulders of various size. A German archaeologist, G. Schweinfurth, 
who discovered the dam in 1885 calculated it would have been necessary to excavate and transport approximately 100,000 cubed meters of rock and rubble for its construction. The dam was originally 113 meters long and 14 meters high but now there are only the remains of its construction on both sides of the wadi. The northern wall extends about 24 meters into the wadi and the southern one about 2700 meters long into the wadi. But they estimate there is about 17,000 cut blocks of limestone on the outside of the dam on the slopes. That is certainly an interesting construction technique, that is for sure. And here is another look at the eroded dam but they theorized that it would have created a reservoir of 620,000 cubic meters of water and they theorize that it came from the old kingdom based on carbon dating from a workers camp located right nearby. Now they guesstimate it took about 10 or 12 years of construction to finish what we find here today but a catastrophic flood took it out and then they did not build another dam, I guess, for about eight centuries, maybe because of the failure of this one, or at least they didn't try one on such a large scale project, but they were certainly trying to control parts of the Nile. And this is proof of that. But maybe a reason why they didn't try any large scale projects is because the period after the Old Kingdom appeared to be a period where there were some really bad things going on in Egypt, and I went into that in my Egypt impact video from last week. But spring. it talks about flooding in the wadi here. It says even nowadays inhabitants in the region have reported that recent occurrences several meters high have destroyed villages and claimed lives. It is assumed by many authors that the dam was intended for the retention of rare but violent floods. So they were protecting people from violent floods. That is just what people surmise. But there is really no evidence of a large settlement upstream from this, so still kind of a mystery why it was built. But I just think it's a fascinating story, a large dam, one of the largest and oldest we have in the world here in Egypt. Hope you thought that was interesting. You all have a very nice day.